Hey, you guys. It's me, Elizabeth. Um, I am bringing you this training that, well, the purpose of it is to just show the value of booking one party, like the power of just one party, okay? So the other night, I was at a party, and it was a $2,000 party before I left, and she has girls who are going to place online orders, okay? And I had just, this has been a very lucrative party line for me. So on my way home, it was like an hour drive. I thought just to keep myself awake because it was late and it was really, really a dark night. I just wanted to do the thought exercise of saying to myself, okay, how did I end up in this really, really lucrative party vein? Because every party has a nucleus somewhere, right? And I've been doing this six and a half years. So I was just wondering as an experiment, could I trace it all the way back? So in, it took me the whole hour home to trace this all the way back. So my hostess the other night, her name is French, um, and she had this $2,000 party. It was amazing. It was an amazing, amazing party. Okay, so I gotta, I gotta pull out my notes so I can like tell you guys. So French booked her party at her cousin Claire's party, okay? Um, Claire had a $1,200 party. Um, for me like a month ago or two months ago or something like that. I guess a couple months ago. Anyway, I booked Claire at her mom, Amy. Okay. Now here's a fun thing about Amy's party. Amy's party was on my calendar. She was supposed to host April of 2020. So I booked her at her friend Missy's party. Okay. I booked Amy's party then and it got put on indefinite hold. She didn't want to do it online. And so July of 2021, my calendar had pretty much, you know, gotten to a point where it needed, it needed me to do, do some work. So I picked up the phone and I called Amy and I said, Amy, would love to get you back on my calendar. You know, it's warm out, you know, like maybe we could do something outside. Um, and she said, you know, Elizabeth, I'm just not ready to recommit yet. And I said the hard thing. Okay. I said, Amy, my business really needs this. And it would help me so, so much. Even if I put you, no matter how far in the future I have to put you, like August, September, October, whatever you want to do. But it would help me so much to restart my business after this pandemic if I could put a date down for you. So I said the hard thing. She said no. And I said the hard thing that comes after that, which is the true thing. I need your help, right? And so she booked her party for that September. Her party held. It was a $2,500 party. Okay, like I said, I met her at her friend Missy's. I met Missy at Becky's. Okay, Becky's party, guys, this is now we're pre-pandemic. Um, Becky's party was a $3,400 party. That party was amazing. Okay, amazing. And mind you, at all of these parties got multiple bookings, but I'm just going to take you guys through this one party line. And I'm going to make this as non-boring and as helpful as possible. Okay? I met Becky at her niece Lori's. Okay? And I met Lori at her cousin Nancy's. All right? Now... When I met Lori that day, I asked her to book a party. I tried really hard to make her book a party. And she said no. And I said, oh, come on. You must know people who you know want to see this demo. You must have friends who would think it was awesome. And you might have people in your life who really need to hear this message. And you might not even know it. I laid it on really thick with her. And she was still like, no, no, sorry. It's just I'm not, I'm not the host type. She called me the next day and said, you know what? I do want to book a party. You guys, don't just give up at the no, all right? Sell it, sell it, sell the value of a party because you might just get a phone call the next day from somebody going, hey, it's me from last night. I do want to book a party. My mind was blown because I tried everything I had on her <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh. So anyway, so I met her at Nancy's. I met Nancy at Olivia's. Olivia had a $2,200 party, you guys. She, um, she's hosted twice for me now and both of her parties were just huge parties. Okay, I met Olivia at Kara's. Kara has had three parties for me since then. She always hosts a $1,000 party. Kara's like a machine. I can count on her 100% for a $1,000 party. <laughs> I met Kara at Elaine's. Elaine's party was a nightmare. And Elaine's party was the only party I was ever really at where there was like a true heckler. Like, just a mean girl, okay? <laughs> she was, that was a nightmare. <laughs> but, you know, I persevered. And the people who did book parties from that party were like, I was so proud of how you handled that. I'm thinking I was going to... I left there and was just about in tears, you know, and you guys know it takes a lot to really kind of hurt my feelings. This chick was horrible, okay? However, <laughs> it all turned out okay. I met 
a lane at Toria's party. Okay, Toria, I met at her sister Bridget's party. I met Bridget at Wanda's party. By the way, both of those, Bridget and Wanda, those were both $2,000 parties. I met Wanda at Andrea's party. And you guys, this is back. Now I'm back in the phase where I was going to West Virginia a lot, like weekly. Um, so the next five hostesses I list, they're going to be people I was driving like an hour, hour and a half, over an hour, like hour and 20 minutes, hour and a half to get to their houses because I was that determined to keep this business going. And I knew that West Virginia didn't have consultants and needed them. And so I made that effort to go out there um, on a sometimes a couple times a week basis. So Wanda, I met at Andrea's. Andrea, I met at Sonia's. Sonia, I met at Judy's. Okay, guys. Judy was a hostess that when I met her at Cindy's party, um, I asked her if she'd like to book a party and she scared me to death. Her answer was like, I do not host things like this in my house. We have a lot of valuable artwork and we do not welcome a bunch of people into our home. I was like, okay. I mean, she really intimidated me with her answer. It was, it was very direct and I was like, okay, I'll never ask again. I'm sorry. Um, so I was like, well, a couple months after I met her, she reached out to me and said she would like to try. She bought, I think, a household package. Or it was either a basic package or a household package. She reached out to me and wanted to try the detergent and the dryer balls. So I I reached out back. I called her to place her order myself. I didn't just send her my link. I picked up the phone and I said, Hey, Judy, I guess this means you're liking your other things. That makes me really happy. And, um, and you guys, this is not an easy phone call to make, right? This woman is intimidating. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, um, I guess this means you're liking your stuff. And she's like, you know, there's a lot more things I would like, but I just can't get my husband on board. So I think I'm just going to have to do things little by little. And I said, guys, this is somebody who lives about an hour and 20 minutes from me. I said, what would you think about me driving out to do a demo for you guys so that he could see it? She's like, surely you wouldn't want to drive over an hour to come out here to do a demo for two people. And I said, no, not really. But if it helps him understand, you know, and it helps you eliminate more chemicals in your home, I would be willing to do that. What would be more optimal for me is if you guys had a friend, you know, a couple of couple friends who might come over, maybe invite one or two couples over and we could do like a mini party. You know, I wonder if you'd be open to that. And she said, you know, I think that would be great. This is a woman who told me she was never, ever going to host something like this. <laughs> um, so she ended up then in that same conversation, she went, you know, my hairdresser needs to really hear about this too. I said, okay, well, I'm going to send you some invitations and I'm going to tell you, I, oh, I didn't, I actually, I will say, I wasn't brave enough to say this to her over the phone, but I wrote on her 30 invitations. I said, if you fill out all 30 of these and send me a picture, I'll add a pack of sponges to your host order. So she sure did invite 30 people. She had a 12 person party, you guys. It was, um, it was a thousand dollar party. She's hosted three parties, um, in total. And she actually is one of my highest, like if I pull my customer reports and look at like, you know, who has spent the most money with my business over the years, she is like in the top. Um, she, she is a consistent customer and has become a really good friend. Um, she always sends me home with a gift, um, a really cool, unique gift, like a big fish one time that her husband caught um, because she knows I like to like eat wild, healthy foods. Um, like she, she's just amazing. She's just an amazing, amazing person that I was brave enough to try to get to know. Okay. Anyway, so like, I, the point being, step out of your comfort zone, you guys, okay? I met Judy at Cindy's, and I met Cindy at Linda's. Now, when I met Cindy at Linda's, Cindy said, I would book a party, but I live in West Virginia. <laughs> so I pull up her dress, and, and she lives about an hour and 25 minutes away from me. And you guys, at the time, I was still not 100% confident in like my Norwex outfit, okay? And I wasn't very confident to drive that far by myself. I know that sounds really stupid, doesn't it? But you have to realize that I've um, been with my husband since I was 14. And so from the time I got a driver's license, we've been together. We, you know, shared a car. We, and he, I don't know, he always drove. He always drove everywhere. So it's not like I can't drive. I just, like, 
it was weird for me to do Norwex already by myself. Um, at that point in time, I had been a stay at, at this time when I joined Norwex, I had been a stay at home mom for nine years and I had to give up having a car for me, for us to afford me staying home with the kids. So driving an hour and a half to a party in the sticks of West Virginia was way outside my comfort zone. But like I said, I knew that there was a need for Norwex consultants and I knew that this is how I knew I wanted my business to continue to move forward. And I decided that I was willing to do that, right? Um, so anyway, I met Linda at Kitska's party. Kitska's my neighbor. She's this gorgeous redhead. I love her. <laughs> and um, and Kitska's party was a great party. Several bookings there. Of course, like I said, of course I got many bookings at all of these parties and, and whatever. This is just one direct party line. And here's what I came on to tell you guys. I met Kitska, my, it was my second winter as a Norwex rep. I don't know, have you guys had like a slow February? Sometimes January and February can get a little slow. I think it's partially because people are sort of hibernating. Some people get seasonal depression. Um, you know, snow happens, weather happens. It's dark out really early. I think people's energy is low. It can be a dip time in your business and if you're experiencing that it is okay but what you need to do is wake up now so very very early that March I had a party at my house it was I want to say it was like the second or third of March I didn't go back and look it up but I do remember scheduling it it was the first first Sunday of March I scheduled a party at my house because um I had run into like an emergency situation with a birthday gift or something. I had bought some Usborne books and and I needed desperately to have them by a certain day and the box didn't arrive when it was supposed to. So I reached out on Facebook and said, does anybody know a local Usborne rep? And because my girl wasn't local and whatever. I got hooked up with this Usborne rep and she had never seen a Norwex demo. So I bought a bunch of Usborne from her and I asked if she would come over if I planned a party. So I planned a party just because I met this one new person. Okay, that's what, that's how I got there. And then I sort of begged my neighbors, will you come to this demo? Well, in the end, the only RSVP yes that I had was this Usborne consultant and my neighbor, Kitska, who had also not seen the demo. So two people is a win, but it feels a little bit scarce. You know, you're kind of like feeling a little embarrassed that you don't have a better turnout. Thankfully, the Usborne lady showed up with a friend Deb, she's the Osborne lady, booked a party. My neighbor Kitska booked her party. And her, her friend that she came with ended up joining the team. And from that, that one ask, like, oh wait, do you, you, do you know what Norwex is? Would you come over and see a demo? And then reaching out to my neighbors and going, would you come over? Would you please come over? I need to turn this into a party and I would like for you to see this demo. It's not a comfortable conversation to have. It's not a comfortable thing to throw a party with two RSVPs. It's a little embarrassing. But because I stepped outside of my comfort zone, I booked another party of my own. You guys, that was at minimum my fourth party that I had hosted myself. Actually, it was at minimum my fifth party I had hosted myself. And if not more, okay? But like re-hosting, 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 right? Just, you guys, if you meet one new person, create a party because you met them. Like, oh, well, it turns out I'm having a party soon. Would you come, right? You can come and check it out at my next party. It's on this day. Invent it right now. You know, like, be brave about that. And um, you'll find that, that you might just have a really, really um, successful party line, right? It's really powerful. So I added up all of those parties in that direct line and it's over $27,000 from those parties. And you guys, I think it was 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. It's 19 parties in total on that line. That started, like I said, on um, March, I think it was March 3rd, 2017. Okay. So this is five years ago. Um, 19 parties later, $27,000 in sales, um, a minimum of five teammates. I couldn't remember. This goes back pretty far, so I couldn't, I couldn't remember altogether. Um, but a minimum of 
five teammates, and under those teammates, other teammates have come to the team, right? Um, $10,000 of commission. That doesn't count the commission I made on the teammates that joined because of that. And in five years of business, okay, because I did the uncomfortable thing, I rehosted my own party, you know, I asked those people that came to book parties, I asked people who said no, why not, right? I asked people again who said no, even if they scared me. <laughs> and I'm here today to get to tell you the story about the power of just having one more party. So if you feel like your business fizzled out and you feel like you've reached out to every person you possibly can, just ask yourself, is there one or two more people on this planet that if I threw a party, I could get them to come? Because if the answer to that is yes, and we all know it is, so don't pretend it could ever be no, then it sounds like you need to host another party, right? Don't let go of your business, you guys. Keep the lights on, okay? Because um, you could, you know what I mean? You guys, a $2,000 party the other night, that's $700 in commission. I mean, that's crazy, right? That's crazy. This party line was $10,000 of commission. And lots of friends, lots of teammates, lots of relationships along the way. So very worth it. Um, so make the ask, you know, if you haven't done that, make the hard ask, put a party on your own calendar. And um, yeah, you're, you're here, you're supported. And you're um, part of something bigger, right? So anyway, I hope that uh, that all makes sense. And um, I hope somebody, somebody out here puts a party on their calendar because of it. Okay, get brave, book yourself a party, invite those couple people in your life who haven't seen it yet. And just keep doing that over and over again until it sticks. Okay? And if you have to go through a pandemic, don't give up. <laughs> don't forget to reach out to those hostesses who said they needed to rebook and ask for their help. Ask for their help. Okay? Anyway, that's it for me today, you guys. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope I hope you find some value in this training.